Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. It's 33 days to go to GCSE Maths paper and today we're going to be focused on the topic of non-linear simultaneous equations. So we've looked at simultaneous equations previously. Now we're going to look at these simultaneous equations that might involve their squared or something like that. Okay, so we're going to look at non-linear simultaneous equations. Now I really like these non-linear simultaneous equations and I'm going to go through the video and how we can solve them. I'm going to give you some questions to try yourself. And I'm also going to show you how you can use the nonlinear simultaneous equations to find out the coordinates, the points where quadratics and straight lines might intersect and things like that. So in this video, we're going to look at nonlinear simultaneous equations. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at nonlinear simultaneous equations. So we're going to look at how to solve simultaneous equations where they're both not linear equations. Um, feel free if you like this or you want to give it a shot, feel free to press pause and try the questions yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to go through them. So let's have a look at our first one. The first one says solve the simultaneous equations y equals x plus 3 and x squared plus y squared equals 149. Now this one's quite nice because we know that the y equals x plus 3. So that means that we can replace this y with x plus 3. So I'm going to substitute x plus 3 into here, our second equation. So we'd have x squared, so we'd have x squared plus, and then instead of y, we're going to write in brackets x plus 3, close bracket squared, and that equals 149. Now this is great, we can now solve this equation, or we can try to solve this equation. So we've got x squared, then we've got a bracket squared, so I like to write it out beside itself, so x plus 3 bracket x plus 3, and that equals 149. Because obviously here we replace the y with the x plus 3 that's equal to, and we're squaring it, so we're multiplying it by itself. Now we need to expand these brackets, so we've still got our x squared at the front, x times x is x squared, x times 3 would be plus 3x, 3 times x would be plus 3x, and 3 times 3 is 9. So that's equal to 149. So we've just expanded our brackets. Now let's simplify this left-hand side. We've got x squared plus x squared. That's 2x squared. We've got 3x plus 3x. That's plus 6x. And we've got plus 9. And that equals 149. Fantastic. Now let's write this up here. So we've got 2x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 149. If we solve this equation now, we can find our values for x, and then that will help us then find our values for y. Now this equation, I'm going to get it to equal 0, so I'm going to subtract 149 from both sides. So subtract 149 from both sides. The left-hand side will become 2x squared plus 6x. 9 take away 149 would be minus 140, and that equals 0. Now this equation, we can divide it by 2. We can divide everything by 2, so we'd get x squared plus 3x minus 70 equals 0. Now we want to try and factorize this left-hand side. So let's try and factorize this left-hand side and see what we get. So trying to factorize this, well, we're going to put x in the front of both brackets. Because it's x squared, that's quite nice. The two numbers will multiply together to give us negative 70 and add together to be 3. So I'm thinking plus 10 and minus 7. Because 10 times minus 7 would be minus 70. And minus 7 plus 10 would be 3. Fantastic. Now let's solve this. Well, we want it to equal 0. So either bracket's going to equal 0. So here, x equals minus 10 or or and x equals 7. So we've got the either x equals minus 10 or x equals 7, or you could write and there, it's up to you, whatever preference you write there, or and. So we've got our values for x, now we need to substitute those in to get the values for y. So here we've got y equals x plus 3, so y equals x plus 3. So to find the value for y, we just add 3 to the x value, so we're going to substitute in minus 10 here and 7 here and see what y is. So y equals, if x equals minus 10, so you're going to get minus 10 plus 3, that's going to be equal to minus 7, and here, if you've got the x is equal to 7, 7 plus 3 is equal to 10, so y is equal to 10. So that means that our solutions are x equals minus 10, y minus 7, and x equals 7, and, and y equals 10. And that's it, there are our two solutions. So our solutions are x equals minus 10, and y equals minus 7, or x equals 7, and y equals 10. And that's it. And in this question, rather than being asked to solve the simultaneous equations, if you're ever asked to find the coordinates where they intersect, so if you're told a straight line has equation y equals x plus 3, and you've got a circle of equation x squared plus y squared equals 149, if you're asked to find the coordinates of where those intersect, then the coordinates would be negative 10, negative 7, and 7, 10. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question. We've been asked to solve the simultaneous equations x minus 4y equals 2 and x squared minus 8y squared equals 68. Now, in this question, it's a little bit different than the last one. The last one was a bit nicer because we had y equals, whereas this time you don't have x equals or y equals. But this one, what you would do is you just make x or y the subject of the top equation and then substitute into the bottom one. Now, here I'm thinking here, making x a subject would be the best approach. So if you want to try this question yourself now, feel free to make x a subject of the top one and then just replace the x squared with whatever that is squared and then see if you can uh, expand and solve that equation and get the values for y and the, then the values for x so have a go at this now yourself if you want to
Okay, so let's make x the subject of the first one. So let's add four. So let's write it down. X minus four y equals two. We want to make x the subject. So let's add four y and add four y. So we get the x equals two plus four y. So we've made x the subject of the first one. Now we're going to substitute that into our second equation. So we had x squared. Now instead of x squared, we've got two plus four y. So it's going to be two plus four y squared minus eight y squared equals 68. So what we've done there is we've made x a subject of the first one. We've replaced the x in the second one with whatever it was. So we put a bracket and put it down and then put the squared. Now we're going to need to expand these brackets. So remember, whenever you square a bracket, you multiply by itself. So we've got 2 plus 4y, brackets 2 plus 4y, and then subtract 8y squared equals 68. So now we're going to expand these brackets and solve this quadratic. And hopefully it'll factorize and solve quite nicely. Let's have a look and see. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4y would be plus 8y. 4y times 2 would be plus 8y. And 4y times 4y would be plus 16y squared. And then we've still got our minus 8y squared, and that equals 68. Now let's simplify this left-hand side, where we've got our 4 plus 8y plus 8y is 16y. And then we've got 16y squared, take away 8y squared, that's going to be plus 8y squared. And that's equal to 68. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring everything to one side. And I'm actually just going to rearrange this left-hand side. I'm just going to write it as 8y squared plus 16y plus 4 equals 68. I'm just doing that just so it's more in the, the format I'm used to whenever I'm looking at quadratics. Now I want it to equal 0, so I'm going to take away 68 and take away 68 from both sides. So on the left-hand side, I would have 8y squared plus 16y. With 4, take away 68, that's going to be minus 64 equals 0. Now here if we have a look here, we've got 8y squared, 16y, and minus 64. They're all divisible by 8. So let's divide everything by 8. So we get y squared plus 2y, and then minus 8 equals 0. Okay, so we've got our equation. Now let's see if we can factorize it and solve it. So let's factorize it if we can. So bracket, 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 bracket equals 0. And we've got y and y. We're looking for two numbers that are multiplied together to be minus 8 and add together to be 2. So I'm thinking plus 4 and minus 2, because 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. And minus 2 plus 4 is equal to 2. Fantastic. Now we want to solve this quadratic. So we want to find our solutions. So each bracket equals 0. So either y equals minus 4 or y equals 2. So we've got our values for y. Now we need to find our values for x. Now here we've got the x equals x equals 2 plus 4y. So in other words, to find the value for x, we're going to multiply the y value by 4 and add 2. So let's consider whenever y is equal to minus 4, we would have x equals 2 plus 4 times minus 4. We've then got 4 times minus 4 would be minus 16. So we've got 2 plus minus 16. And 2 plus minus 16 would be minus 14. So that means that x would be equal to minus 14. Or if y is equal to 2, we get that x is equal to 2 plus 4y. So it's 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is equal to 8. So we've got 2 plus 8. So x is equal to 10. So that means our two solutions are x equals minus 14, y equals minus 4, x equals 10, and y equals 2. So there are two solutions, that x equals minus 14, y equals minus 4, or x equals 10 and y equals 2. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So our last question says, find the coordinates of the points of intersection of y equals 3x minus 3, so that's a straight line graph, and a quadratic here, y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 2. So we've got this U-shaped parabola and this straight line graph, and they could either cross twice touch once or not touch at all but because this is the coordinates of the points of intersection i'm guessing they're going to intersect twice and we need to find the coordinates of where they intersect now in terms of these nonlinear simultaneous equations i really like them whenever they're in this in this form when you've got y equals and y equals well if you've got y equals and y equals you can just put them equal to each other you can just substitute in if instead of this y you can write 3x minus 3 here so you can just substitute that in there and then that just means that you've got you can just put them equal to each other so we would have 3x minus 3 equals 2x squared squared minus 8x plus 2. And I like it whenever you've got y equals and y equals and you want to find where they meet because then you can just, as I said, put them equal to each other. And that's it. So now we just need to solve this. So let's get it equal in 0. So let's take away 3x from both sides and let's add 3 to both sides. So let's take away 3x to begin with. So take away 3x and take away 3x. So we're going to get minus 3 is equal to 2x squared minus 11x because eight minus 8x minus 3x will be minus 11x plus 2. Now we want it to equal 0, so we're now going to add 3 and add 3. So we get the 0 equals 2x squared minus 11x and 2 plus 3 is plus 5. So we've got a quadratic, it equals 0, fantastic. Now let's see if we can factorize it. Hopefully we can. So 0 equals bracket, 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 bracket. I'm going to go for 2x and x at the front of both brackets because it's 2x squared, so it'll have to be 2x and x. And in terms of the numbers here, 
we want two numbers here and here that are multiplied together to be 5. And then whenever we expand our brackets, we get minus 11x. Now, because we're expanding to get minus 11x, it's going to have to be a minus and a minus. So we're going to have to be minus something times minus something to give us 5, because a negative times a negative is a positive. And when we expand our brackets, then we get the negative we want. If they were both positives, we couldn't get a negative here. Now, in terms of minus 11x, I'm thinking if we put a 5 there and a 1 there, then that would work. And let's just check. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times minus 5 would be minus 10x. Minus 1 times x is minus x, so that's going to be minus 11x. Fantastic. And then we've got minus 1 times minus 5, which is 5. Fantastic. So we're factorized. Now we want the brackets to equal 0, so here x equals 5. That's quite straightforward. When I've got a bracket like this, I like to, because I want to find when it's equal to 0, I'm going to write 2x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides, so I get 2x equals 1. And then divide by 2, I get x equals a half. So I tend to, whenever I've got a number in front of the x, I don't go straight to the answer. I just go to the side, quickly work it out, just so I don't make a mistake. Sometimes I find students sometimes get the wrong sign there, or if it's a fraction, they the wrong way around. So x equals a half, or x equals 5. So we've got the x coordinates, now let's find the y coordinates, because the y coordinate is 3 times the x coordinate, take away 3. So now let's multiply these by 3 and take away 3. So let's start off with 5, x equals 5. So you get y equals 3 times 5, which is 15, take away 3, which would be equal to 12. So that means that y equals 12. So as a coordinate, that would be the coordinate 5, 12. And in terms of whenever x is equal to a half, if x is equal to a half, remember to find the y coordinate, we multiply by 3 and then take away 3. So that means that y equals 3 times x, so 3 times a half would be 3 halves, or 1 and a half, or 1.5, take away 3. And 3 halves take away 3, or 1.5 take away 3 would be minus 1.5, or minus 3 over 2, whichever way you want to write it. So that means that y is equal to minus 1.5, or minus 3 over 2. So y is equal to minus 3 over 2. So the coordinates at this point would be a half, and then minus 3 over 2. Or you could have written it as 0.5 minus 1.5, like so. And that's it. And in this question, we're asked for the coordinates of the points of intersection. So it would be 5, 12, and then a half minus 1 and a half. And that's it. And that's it. So in today's video, we've looked at nonlinear simultaneous equations. I really hope you found this video useful. It's one of those topics which you generally appear in the second half of the GCSE maths paper, so it can be quite tricky. But if you do the practice questions and keep practicing it, hopefully you can even pick up full marks in this question. And it'd be a nice one to pick up the marks on. So well done, and I'll see you tomorrow for 32 days to go to GCC Mouse Paper. Cheers. Bye.